Good afternoon, and welcome to Message to the Masculine, episode number 443. And topic today is when the chemistry wears off, dot, dot, dot. And I'll get to that in detail in a second, but let me introduce myself first and get into the topic. So, hi, my name is Barry Selby. I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And every day I do these talks called Messages to the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, unless otherwise announced, but right now 5 p.m. Pacific Time works. And today's topic, again, the, the episode number is 443. And the title of the topic today is When the Chemistry Wears Off, or something like that. And this was inspired by a conversation with a friend of mine yesterday who is going through some challenges in her relationship. So I thought I'd add some insights, perspective, suggestions, feedback, and guidance into this talk. So consider for yourself this question. Have you been in a relationship that was inspired and sparked by chemistry alone? And I like to think that pretty much everyone else can say, yes, we have, because I certainly have. And I've got, got a strong feeling you have too. Chemistry is a wonderful thing with some caveats. <laughs> Did I sit with them and say that? The nuance of this is that chemistry is, I mean, I can, I can cut to the chase right now, but I want to give you some more, more context. Chemistry is that wonderful, mystery, myst, wonderful, mysterious thing that draws us into a relationship. And there are several reasons why it happens and also why it isn't ideally the way it happens. Because chemistry, a lot of times, is driven by what I talked about um, Yesterday, I think. In recent broadcasts, I think it was yesterday, I talked about love conditions, or I should say um, conditioned loving, like the conditions you have for loving. And a lot of those conditions are what triggers and inspires the chemistry. For example, if you have conditions where in your upbringing you were in relationships that are always hot blooded and, and there was a lot of arguments going on, a lot of raised voices and a lot of yelling, you'll feel more chemistry with somebody who does that with you. So if somebody you're with is very nice and calm, relaxed, and doesn't have any outbursts, you may not feel the chemistry. And to be honest, that chemistry may be mislabeled. But basically because you have this attraction to that pattern that you had, uh, that conditioning you had when you were younger, as an adult, the same thing's gonna happen. So the conditioning that you're going to be attracted to will be that volatile, upset, angry, yelling type quality. And the thing is, it may not be something they, that person does overtly, but you can feel it in them. Like you know within them is that power. And that's what attracts you. That's the chemical reaction. So that's one of the things that is um, inspiring chemistry. The thing about chemistry is when it's done that way, it's painful. Largely because what's happening is your attraction to somebody is driven by a limiting pattern, a limiting experience. That is not ideally fun because... I use the example of someone who raises their voice and yells a lot, but what if that, that um, condition of love you experienced was done through abuse? Which means you would be chemically attracted to someone who would abuse you as well. And that ain't fun. In fact, that's one of the downsides of chemistry, is it can actually be against what you really want in your heart and your mind, because it's driven by programming, it's driven by that conditionality that you were raised with. So first of all, when the chemistry wears off, that's a good thing because the chemistry is not a good thing to have that way around. Attraction from a heart level place is a different conversation, a different context than that chemistry. So that's one thing, two things, one and a half. Another part of this chemistry challenge is that we get drawn to a type of person who physically represents something that we may have been raised with as well. For example, ladies, you may find yourself drawn to somebody who physically reminds you of your father in terms of how they look. Not an identical match, not, not, not a um, facial match, but the way they carry themselves, the energy they have, what they bring to the conversation may in fact remind you of them. And men can do the same thing for their mothers. So it's not saying it's like it's one, only one way. Both genders have this, um, I would say programming, this logic inside that drives us towards a certain preference because that's the, that's the familiar 
um, presentation of the opposite sex. So that makes sense. That would be another form of chemistry too. So that's two chemistry, two and a half. <laughs> I'm playing with halves and ones. So that's two different chemistry attract, uh, two different forms of chemistry that attract. Neither one may be the ideal one. And I'll get to the ideal one in a minute. So stay with me. So one is based upon the patterns you are raised with. Second one is raised on the embodiment of the opposite parent you were loved by when you were a kid. That's a good way of putting it. There's a third one that's going to come to me as well, which is basically, um, it's almost the, it's almost the rebellious opposite streak. For some of us, and yes, I'm including this one in myself as well, but for some of us, included you and me, we had such a repulsion to certain behaviors from our parents and our family dynamic when we were younger, we're actually chemistry, chemically attracted to someone who's the opposite of that. So you'll be a re rebel and go, I want to give somebody totally opposite. So if someone who's very loud and violent and abusive and everything else, you'll go to someone who's quiet and calm, and that'll turn you on, as strange as that sounds. So that's, another, that's a third option for what chemistry is generated by. So, starting with that as the conversation, um, the challenge with this is that, first of all, if it's chemistry driven or chemical driven at the beginning, it's that, that almost karmically driven, then what's going to happen is as you go through time, as you, um, I was going to say survive, that's not the right word, as you experience, let's, say, let's use the word experience, that's a safe word. If you experience relationship for a period of time, that chemistry at time, because especially if it's the only thing that's holding you together, it's the other thing. Those three things I talked about are generally the only thing that draws you into that relationship. Other things are missing. And so that what happens is the relationship proceeds as time goes by the relationship itself will tend to be stressed by the lack of anything else. It's almost like putting all the pressure on at one point, which is the chemistry. And that chemistry as a um, fulcrum for the relationship isn't going to work. In fact, what happens is over a period of time, it's going to fall apart. It's going to basically just disappear. So when chemistry alone is the driving force for relationship, when it fades, and it will, the relationship is going to end. You can try to maintain it. You can try to stick it together. It's like putting Band-Aid on a rock, it won't stick very well. So there's a better approach. <laughs> I will get into that. So one of the things I want to speak to is, in a way, the sequence of events. I talked about this in a recent broadcast a week or two ago about making friends. And I'm going to bring this up now because it's important to realize. Many people's relationships are not driven by friendship. And it's a shame. Because when they're not driven by friendship, they're driven by the other things like chemistry or sexual attraction, or maybe something else that is less sustaining than friendship can be. As I mentioned, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday that inspired this talk, and she was telling me about this relationship she's in. Um, it's like the chemistry's gone, and he's basically been really nasty to her. And the truth is, they haven't been friends, really, the whole time they've been together. And they weren't friends before. They saw each other across paths, but there was a distinct um, lack of true aligned energies that would have been sustaining and would have been um, the foundation of a healthy relationship. So for me, I'm learning this because I didn't learn it before, so this is a mistake I made in the past. I would be driven by chemistry or by, or by sexual attraction or by other things that would be exciting and new, but the friendship would never be there at the beginning. It might show up later. In fact, I have relationships that ended after a period of time and the friendship happened afterwards, which can happen. But a lot of times relationships end because the, there's no compatibility, then they've worn out, you've like used up the, 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 the bottle of chemistry you had, if you want to put it that way. So there's nothing left. And when you end, there's nothing, there's no friendship, there's no nothing, and, it go, and you go your separate ways. And I've got some past relationships that are like that as well. And I'm sure you have too, because if you're like me, you're a human being on the planet, you've had a few relationships, and you've got some lessons. So, friendship, I think, is a pivot point. No, no, excuse me, pivot. A key point, and I mean it this way, is that relationships are best established on healthy, firm foundations, and friendship's one of those. There are other pieces as well I would add to the conversation, including, yes, you want to have, you want to have a, a sexual polarity, and that's something that can actually can grow. It doesn't have to be there from the beginning. As much as some people think it's got to be from the get-go, like love at first sight or lust at first sight. Yeah, maybe. But for a lot of people, it's a thing that can grow in time. 
I know I know people I know who were friends first, who until a year or two later didn't realize there was a chemistry, or, sorry, a sexual attraction that was like, whoa, I didn't realize that before. And that's a much healthier way of doing things because the friendship is undergirding everything. And so what happens is the sexual energy is additive and becomes more fully expressed because it's not the only thing the relationship is relying upon. And this is the thing. Something that people think about relationships is this singular focus, like, well, I'm attracted to them for this reason only. It's extremely um, precarious, maybe the word. It's extremely... Uh, I can use precarious, I guess, the only way I think of it fits this one. To, to, it's like having all your eggs in one basket, to use, to use an analogy. If you're focused on somebody, attraction to somebody because of the sex or because of the chemistry, with nothing else, it's like putting the eggs in my basket, someone sits in the basket and you crush all the eggs. That's not the, that was a really bad analogy, but you get my point, is the fact that there's no other places to resource. A healthy relationship has several different pieces to stand upon, to, to different foundations. So yes, there is sexual connection. Yes, there is friendship. Yes, there is, um, if you're somebody who's like a, a sapiosexual, sexual, which I'm kind of a sapiosexual sexual myself, there's, there's a mental um, rapport that is fun to play with. There's also emotional freedom to express with each other. There's a, an, um, a love for adventure. All these different components that make up a relationship, make your relationship more substantial, more effective, and more able to last. Now, if you don't want a relationship that lasts, don't bother with any of this stuff. But if you want a relationship that's gonna last, invest in knowing these things that will parallel you and your partner to make a very healthy connection that lasts for a long time. Because this is the thing that people forget, is they meet somebody across a crowded room and they think they must be the one because I feel these, these um, fuzzy feelings in my chest and I'm, I must be attracted to them and it must be the one. It might be, but if you rely upon that energy only, you may find yourself coming up short. And my advice to you is, is build friendship with everybody you're attracted to. Because if nothing else, you have more friends, but possibly you have a friendship that becomes an amazing relationship that's based on friendship and that is a healthy way to do a light relationship. It may not be as sexy as that, that, that karmic attraction. It's also not as um, destructive, painful, limited, short-lived, dysfunctional either. And that's a good thing. So if you're looking for a relationship that really will last, start with one where you feel a connection that is more than just sexual. Start with something where there feels like there's a rapport and a commonality of, of um, not say lifestyle, but of values. That's another piece, by the way. Um, if you want a healthy relationship, get clear about your values. Because if your partner has the same values as you, that's a much better place to plant build from. If you have very different values, you might find yourself having some challenges. I've had that in the past. And so it's important to have those common touch points, I use that word, for healthy relationships that most people ignore. And which is why the relationship, why, why the Sorry, why the divorce rate is 50-50. It isn't, it's like if we, let me say this, if we as a culture approach a relationship the way I've been suggesting, I'm not saying I'm the master of this, but I do know some stuff, I've been studying this for a long time. If we want to approach a relationship this way, the divorce rate would be much lower because we'd start from a better place. But because we don't, the relationship is where it is. Sorry, the di divorce rate is where it is. 50% divorce rate after first marriage, 70% after second marriage. That's not indicating that things are going better. So my suggestion is, what, I, what I'm suggesting in this broadcast, is take these things to heart. Get clear about what you want. Get clear about your values. Get clear about the friendships you want to build. And get clear about what you really want in life. And then you can look at relationship from additive to that point. And it's got to be additive to who you really are, rather, versus trying to fill up some gap. I've talked about that one before too. Because that, that will be the way that you'll have a healthy relationship. If you're really facing some challenges, you're not sure how to get there or what's in the way of that, that's where I come in. I do recommend uh, my services because this is my work, that's why I do this broadcast every day, it's why I've done 443 of these in a row because they are intended to help you find a way through a relationship and get where you want to go. So here's the thing, if you want to move forward and you want to do it the right way, don't do it alone. Yes, you can go on dating apps and dating sites and swipe and look around and see what's out there, but truly do the inner work. And for that, I recommend working with somebody who knows what they're doing, such as myself. I do offer a complimentary clarity session, a discovery session. It's a 30-minute conversation as my gift to you. 
it's free, it's informative, it's going to challenge you, and it's going to offer you some guidance as well as some offer of services that might fit what you're looking for. That's my invitation. And to get that, you go to barryselby.com, my website, barryselby.com forward slash chat. Um, as I'm doing this broadcast live right now, my website's being transferred over from one host to another, so it might be, if it doesn't work for now, come back in the morning and do it then, just because they're in the middle of shifting some things around on my website. But if it works, great, get in now. Um, also, as a little PS and a reminder, um, I've talked about this many times before, that if you want to have a healthy relationship, don't go looking for love out there, start with the love inside. Self-love is one of the best um, platforms on which to build attraction to somebody else because you don't need them to fill you up. You just look forward to having more fun with them and exploring loving with them by having more overflow. I am to have, just by coincidence, a new offering, a self-love meditation practice that I offer on my website, which again is my website is barryselby.com. If you go to barryselby.com forward slash self-love, check out that gift. Well, it's an investment. But see if you want to get that. It's guided meditations, audio and, and written for men or women that want to build up more self-love, self-support, and self-appreciation. And that will help you with that as well. I think that's about it. Oh, this broadcast, by the way, is Facebook Live, in case you didn't realize, if you're watching this on YouTube, it was there first. So you can find my broadcasts on Facebook. Um, they, they get stored on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, as well as on my YouTube channel, where they end up there. The um, channel is Barry Selby, the playlist is Messages to the Masculine, and now I have a podcast brewing, or I should say expanding. And if you go to Messages for the Masculine on iTunes, you can find my broadcast there, and you can sign up for it and, and subscribe, and then download all my broadcast there. Audio, that is. With that, I think that's everything for today. Um, if you have any questions, comments, please put them below. If you know nobody you should watch this, please share it with them. Also, um, oh, 1 PS. I rather jumped ahead. So I hope you're still on the broadcast because I want to say a couple of things about what happens when the chemistry goes away. If your relationship is based on chemistry alone and the chemistry goes away, the only real thing you've got to do is walk away. There's not much you can do in the relationship unless you build the friendship first. That's why I keep saying put friendship first because when you do have the chemistry fading, you can sit on the friendship as connecting and build from there and back up to get re renew chemistry. And that's the second part. Chemistry in terms of sexual attraction is renewable. Some people think when it goes away, it's gone. The truth about it is that chemistry, chemistry, chemical attraction, or I should say sexual attraction, let's put it that way, is polarity based, meaning that like magnets, the more extreme the polarity is, the more attraction there is between the magnet poles. Same is true with masculine and feminine energy. If you imagine the masculine and feminine is like north south poles of a magnet, the more extreme the partners are, put on the camera, the more extreme the partners are, the more attraction there is because like magnets, it gets pulled together. And so if you're with a partner, like it, not gender specific, this is about straight or gay relationships. One partner's masculine, one partner's feminine, the more, pol more polarity there is, the more attraction there is, which is what really generates the sexual polarity and the chemistry. So chemistry is renewable if it's done from a whole healthy place of masculine feminine polarity. If the, if the chemistry ends and there's nothing else there, the only option is going to be to walk away. So that, I think, gives the piece I was going to add, later, add earlier. I think that's it. Any questions, comments, reach out to me. Um, this broadcast happens every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Same bat channel, same bat, bat time. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. Join me tomorrow for another broadcast. If you have any questions, comments, message me. And always, as I invite you to do, is take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.